unable to win the Champions League of Darts. And he takes on Josh Payne, a man who does have a couple of PDC titles to his name. One of the new breed of darts players. Don't look like conventional darts players, these young men. We have, in the fifth game of the evening session here at the German Darts Grand Prix, the beefcake versus the fruitcake. Josh Payne against Mensor Suljevic for a spot in the final day of action. Rob Malarkey in the commentary box for it. Which one's which, Dan? You know. <laughs> yeah, Mensor Suljevic, I mean, what can you say about him? He's a man who perhaps personifies PDC Europe. Only five players have played more European tour matches than this man. He's been a virtual ever-present over the course of the last seven years on the European Tour. And he has had success on the European Tour stage as well. It's a great story. It's a great journey that he's been on. And there are signs maybe that... First leg to, to throw first... Game on. This is a match that features in the second quarter, and it's worth pointing out as well, Dan, that if Mensor wins this, this will be the only quarter of the draw with four seeds left in it. It is opening up elsewhere, but this is potentially the segment that will be the most difficult to 100. survive and come through into the semi-finals. Yeah, Dave Chisnell was incredible in booking his place in the final day of action. It is Chizzy who awaits. But Mensor, as you say, that the European Tour stages it is synonymous with the great Austrian number one. A man who has made six Euro Tour finals and the final of the European Championship. Won a couple of those Euro Tour finals. There aren't many players who've won more than 100. one European Tour. But if Mensor were to go on and win this here this weekend, he'd move to three titles behind only MVG, Peter Wright, Phil Taylor and Michael Smith. Six. Speaking of Phil Taylor, Mensor Sulevich was playing over in Frankfurt in a big exhibition last night. Beat the power on the way to the title. Beat Simon Whitlock in the final. 57. It was, of course, the European Championship where he went on to make the final. Beat Phil Taylor in that and Peter Wright, in fact. The first time he'd beaten Phil Taylor, it was a big moment, an emotional moment for Mensor. Phil Taylor was always his hero, his idol in the game. 140. And as well as beating Phil Taylor, he's beaten Josh Payne on a fair few occasions before as well. Five, Six. to be precise. Just the one Mensor win for Josh. 161. And just the one previous encounter on the European stage. That was last year in Holland as well. Notably, though, some of those games have been close, and the time that he beat Mensor was the time he went on to win his first PDC title. Yes, that was in Barnsley in 2016. 127. Mensor coming out on top on the most recent meeting, though. That was the one in Holland, 6-5, one of those close encounters. Three 6-5 scorelines, in fact. Has Mensor got his sums right, or is our scoreboard messed up? 84. Mensor, you require 34. Oh, well, our score apparently is correct. Course. He wants six for double fourteen. Game of course, the first what Mensor's leg. done there is go for the twenty-five to guarantee two darts Second at the double leg, when he returns. He's hit the bullseye. First. And double fourteen is a faithful friend to the Austrian <laughs> number one. Like a golden retriever. Watched by his son, who's at the side of the stage. 100. Tariq. I wonder if he'll follow in his father's footsteps. He does like a game of darts, Tariq. I've played him. Did you beat him? 100. Mostly. Hmm? Mostly. So that means you have lost to him. Yes, but I mean, I am dreadful. And Fine young man. Still smiling about evidently, it now. Evidently an Ian White fan hitting the dab there. <laughs> It would have been great if he'd just done the old mental of the things. <laughs> the dying swan. Now then. 
Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. First maximum of this one, and it comes from a man who was going by the nickname The Maximum for a while. I think that's been abandoned now. I'm sure we can do better. Ninety-six. Oh, curious for Mensor yeah. to leave himself a bogey number. Not usually something you see from the gentle. Unless 57. there's some cunning route to 28 from here, but yeah, it seems a little bit out of kilter for Mensor. He's looking at 719 sleeve 32. Here's one of them. Well, I thought he was. Ninety-seven. Josh, you require one hundred and sixty-four. Well, he's got options here: the eighteens, or the twenties, or the nineteens. Well, he's gone the conventional way, but you need to find a couple of trebles for a dart at ball. Forty-four. Mentor, you require sixty-eight from Josh in this leg. Not surrounded by enough good stuff. Mentor, twenty twenty double fourteen. Of course, it is. Game shot the second leg, Mensah Suljevic. And as sure as the night Josh follows day, he finds Pist. double 14. Game on. Well, a couple of 15 darters for Mensah Suljevic to start this game. And for a man who is... I, I don't think he's actually played particularly well over the last few weeks in the Premier League, but he does, after a crucial victory over Darrell Gurney on Thursday night in Cardiff, find himself very much in the hunt for a spot at the 0-2. Yes, I mean, he didn't really... I mean, he punished Gurney for a string of missed doubles in that match, 95. but Sulevich himself didn't really cover himself in too much glory as far as his own finishing was concerned, but he just about did enough. It is a very congested Premier League table with those players vying for third and fourth. 140. Yeah, well, the last few weeks, Mensor, his, his averages have been, in, you know, around 90 in the Premier League, which is not what we really expect from him. We expect him to be high 90s, or as he is at the minute, around about the time. 140. Yeah, he's fifth in the table now, but he's level on points with James Wade after that win over Darrell Gurney the other night. Seems to like playing in Cardiff, doesn't he? Well, he loves, yeah, it's where he won the Champions League 100. title, of course. He's only lost one game in Cardiff. That was to Raymond Van Barneveld in the Premier League. Oh, they're all hitting the dab. <laughs> Stop it now. Hopefully the next time they go back to that table, it's how will be eating a pork sword. That just... I've not seen as many of those snacks in the crowd today. Making a few friends down there, isn't he? With the, uh, the paint supporters. 83. Nathan Derry's here. Nathan Derry's absolutely loving his Euro Tour. He does. He's, he's watched almost. He's watched more matches than I have, I think. Chris Doby in there as well. Yeah, Diogo Portela still here after his elimination yesterday. He's staying around. He's going straight to the qualifiers mm. next week. Not really worth his while going home given the uh, late start to this tournament. Josh, you require 132. Thursday night qualifying at the forthcoming German Open. Josh hasn't really got into this game. 92. He was businesslike in seeing off Jihan Artur in the first round, averaged around about 92. Now, it's not quite at that level here against Mensur, who is just playing too well, and he's going to look at double 14 again. And he's not going to miss it, is he? The first three legs all won on double 14 for Mensur Sulevic, two of them against the throw. Mensur, two from first. This does not bode well for Josh Payne. No, it certainly Game doesn't. 6-2 win against Jihan Artut yesterday for Josh Payne. Pretty good on his finishing yesterday. Six from 11, but he's not involved in this one so far. Five PDC titles to his name for Mensur after winning in Denmark last year, where he uh, overcame, amongst others, Peter Wright, Adrian Lewis and... Simon Whitlock. 59. Whitlock in the final, winning that one 8-3. And then 
second half of last year, he dragged in almost £170,000 in prize money. A finalist at the World Match Play, a semi-finalist at the World Grand Prix. Last four at the Grand Slam. 140. Semi-finalist in the Champions League, semi-finals in the German Darts Championship. Yeah, it should be noted as well. I mean, look, he made the final of the match play, one of the most prestigious tournaments in the world. 100. Arguably the second most prestigious. And he wasn't far off winning it. Yeah. It was one of the great, if not the greatest, match play final. It was certainly the longest match play final in history. And it took an excellent Gary Anderson to stop him. And it was 60. only by a very small margin. Mensor Sulevic, yeah, the Champions League of Darts, a non-ranking title. Still the top eight players in the world, One isn't it? Hundred. Second maximum Josh Payne. But he very nearly won the world match play. And what was astonishing about it, he posted an average of 104 and a bit, and it was the first time he'd ever posted a tumplus average in the world match play, and he saved it for the final. 14 180s as well, men. So I mean, he's not really renowned as a 180 sort of guy, but he hit 14 in that final. Well, it's the most he's ever produced in a single match, but it was a very long match. 21 19. Longest final ever in the 25 year history of the match play. 94. Mensu requires 61. 61 for Mensu for a 4-0 lead and potentially on course for a back-to-back -back whitewash. Double 18. Double 9. Loves that corner of the board. It's just next door to his favourites. Games from the fourth round. And that's 4-0. And Fifth there's a bit of aggression about Mensu now. Game on. He's clearly in the mood. He's clearly zoned in on this one and maybe just maybe we will have back-to-back 6-0 -back score lines tonight yeah well Mensor's strength has always been 131 and this is superb he's taken out 34 68 31 and 61 all right they're not big finishers but they're going every time he comes to the ball now sometimes Josh has been waiting on something ready to check himself like in that last leg sometimes he hasn't but they've just gone. And Josh is going to have to really dig deep. Is it 3 one is here? And the average is actually, he's dragging his average up here, Josh Payne. But he still has an it's, it's sometimes a good thing that you're not taking out big finishes. I mean, sometimes you have you're to take out well a big enough, finish yeah. because you, you, you're 100. forced into it. Your hand has been forced into taking out a big finish because you're under pressure. Mensor. You know, I think he'll be more than happy with these numbers that you just reeled off there. Mm, average 103 and hitting three quarters of your darts, or two thirds of your darts. 100. Win you a lot of games, that will. There should at least be a first dart at double in this match for Josh Payne in this leg. Fifty-four. Josh well, is going to be loads if he needs him. Interesting to go that route with Mensor not on a finish. Oh, well, he's going to split it anyway. 74. Well, fair enough. I mean, he could have gone treble 18, I suppose, or he could have gone bullseye for tops, but... Well, Payne had better take out this double eight now because all of a sudden Joshua he's there and he's looking at double 18 again. Games from and the fifth Payne leg. Josh does Payne. get his first leg on the scoreboard. Sixth leg, Maybe a case of too little too late. We'll find out in due course. Sulevich throwing first here for a 5-1 lead. Eighty-five. And there you see, Mentor Sulevich just sort of ticking along in this game and it's taken the best leg of the match for Josh Payne to deny it. 97. Seeded four here this weekend, Mensur, but he is currently down to number 10 on the Pro Tour Order of Merit. The seedings for this tournament were uh, based on the Pro Tour Order of Merit at the start of March, the first week of March, um, but he has since dropped down to number 10 on the Pro Tour Order of Merit, so he'll just have to watch his step over the next few weeks of good performance here this weekend will uh, do him the world of good 
because there were plenty making their move just outside the top 16. Very healthy indeed so far for Mensa. Josh Payne himself up to number 31 on the Pro Tour order of merit. 81. Yeah, he has changed a few things. Works for his dad, Josh, but he's cut that down from being a full-time job. Or he's having to take loads of holiday for all the dance he's involved in. For so just two days a week so he can focus on his game and I think it's paying dividends. I think he's really going places, Josh Payne. He's hit four 180s in this match and he is doing everything he can to drag himself Josh back into this 84. contest. Credit to his dad as well because he's obviously treating Josh like every other employee with regards to the, the, the unpaid leave and time off and what have you. No favours. And uh, it was something that Payne was acknowledging when... Uh, we made our way over from London for this one. 42. Joshua required oh, 22. To break the Suljevic throw. Three for double four. 14. Mensi require 150. Well, he might yet win this like Josh Payne, but I think he would have liked to have taken that one out there and then just to keep the, the spirits up. Well, the problem is it gives Mensil Silovic the chance to produce a heartbreaker. And, and he's capable of doing it. He is capable of doing this is Mensil Silovic. Just watch this, double 18. 117. Joshua that might eight. have been an effective match winner had it gone. 14. No margin for error here though, Josh, because Silovic... Four. Now has three clear darts. And that might be an effective match loser for Josh Payne. Because just when it looked like he was making a charge, coming back into it, in the ascendancy, all the wind has been taken out of his sails by a succession of six missed darts at double in this leg. Double nine again for Mensour. Just next door. Oh! But he's inside. No score. And he's busted. Josh, you require four. In the madhouse. Game shot he was a long way inside on that Josh single Payne. two, but he gets away with it. He finds the double Seven one. Leg, Josh and I just wonder this. whether we will look back on that missed dart at double dime by Mensor and the missed dart at double 18 as well. In a few minutes' time, as a turning point. Game on. Because 4-1, oh. or 4 nil, in fact, could so easily become 4-3. 100. So quickly change. Brilliant illustration of it. Mensor in real go slow mode this evening. We've already had one instance where 60. Josh has been perched just outside the exclusion zone and Mensor's had to walk around him rather closely just because he was mucking about with all the chalk and 58. stuff he's got on the table there. Quite within his rights to do it. Yeah. Take as long as you want. And certainly completely befuddled James Wade on more than one occasion over the last few weeks. 140. And of course, it won't be long before Mensor is involved on home soil on the European Tour as well. He was close to winning in Graz last year, made the semi finals. Yeah, he has found it hard traditionally in Austria, hasn't he? He does feel the weight of expectation from the home crowd. We've seen that at the World 100. Series finals when it was in Vienna. We've seen him play in Austria before, and it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to happen for him in the same way that it happens for him in Germany, for example. One hundred. He has had success winning tournaments. Of course, yeah, he got the German Masters, the World Series event, didn't he? Yeah. And, um, the International Darts Open in Riesa, that was his first one. He beat Kim Hybrex in the final. 
Yeah, we've made the point before. He's, he's won titles all over the 134. place. Denmark, Joshua Cardiff, and uh, Ireland as well. One of the, the players' championship event he won. Only two in Germany of the five that he has. 111. Payne close to a 1-4-3 checkout that would really have put the cat amongst the pigeons. Sulevich, 67 away from a 5-2 lead and a break of throw that really would settle him down no end. 67 away from a 5-2 lead and a break of throw that really would settle him down no end. And he's now looking at double eight for that 5-2 lead. And he finds it, and that will do him the world of good. Well, a few nods of approval in the crowd. Josh Payne cannot afford to make a Eighth single leg, mistake more. To first game on. And Mensor again will take his time. Josh Payne decides that he'll go and investigate things over at the table. There is some frustration there for Payne. He was not really worrying Mensor at all in the first four legs, but came back strongly. 60. But he hasn't had a great deal to show for it. Not enough, anyway. And he's moving downstairs because 57. he's covered a great deal of that. Devastating timing from Mensur Sulovic. One hundred and forty. Josh Payne just about keeping pace, but Mensur can see the finishing line. And there's nothing slow about his progress now, is there? Nothing slow at all. Back to back maximum bed up during that visit because the final day of action at the German Darts Grand Prix is 60. potentially just two darts Mensur away from Ensor Suljevic. Safety first, guaranteeing one dart for the match at tops. That's all he needs, a 12 darter. Finishes Josh Payne off. A 6-2 victory. 100 average in the end for the gentle. The number four seed will go up against Dave Chisnell for a spot in the quarterfinals here at the German Darts Grand Prix. Three more spots available.